So welcome everyone, um, good evening, and welcome to at the Cafe Politique tonight, which is looking at issues around immigration in Manitoba. My name is Andrea Rounce, and I'm the Academic Director for the Manitoba Institute for Policy Research, and I'm thrilled to see so many uh, faces out here tonight, and looking forward to the discussion that we'll have um, in a little while. So to find out more about the Manitoba Institute for Policy Research, there's some information on your chair. Um, and if you have any questions, there are a number of people here from the Institute who would be happy to have any discussions or answer any questions for you tonight. So we're discussing immigration in Canada, current policies and future directions this evening. Canada has an extensive history of immigration. The challenges of managing immigration and the policies that governments have implemented to do so have been scrutinized and are often changes, changed to re reflect what's going on in terms of local, national and international priorities. So our questions tonight are really around how have these factors or how have these different conditions shaped the Canada of today while laying the groundwork of Canada tomorrow? And locally, what do these changes mean for the situation in Manitoba? As Canada becomes increasingly diverse, what do the challenges around immigration mean for policymakers, community organization, advocacy groups, and citizens as we move further into 2015? So our panel this evening will be answering these questions and many more. So our panel this evening um, is comprised of Mr. Ben Rumpel, uh, Assistant Deputy Minister from Labor and Immigration with the Government of Manitoba, Mr. Will Falk, Chief Statistician with the Manitoba Bureau of Statistics, and Ms. Danielle Allard, who is a PhD candidate in the Faculty of Information at the University of Toronto. And there's detailed information about all three of our speakers um, in your handouts tonight. So just a couple of housekeeping notes. The format tonight will be that each of our speakers will take about eight to 10 minutes to um, talk about one element of immigration in Canada. We can't address every possible element or every possible approach to immigration, but we're going to um, address a number of different questions. And then after that, we'll have about half an hour to 45 minutes for discussion, for questions from the audience, that kind of thing. So we'll have um, uh, time for comments at that point. We are recording tonight's session, but just so you know, if you are asking, asking questions later on in the evening, we do record the questions, but when we uh, post the videos publicly, what we do is we actually, instead of, we take out your voice and we put your question in in text instead, so there's no identification of who it is that's asking the question. So, we switched moderators on the fly, and so I'm just reinterpreting my notes here. So um, at this point, I would normally introduce myself, but that's not really necessary. So I'll be moderating, <laughs> and I'll be taking your questions and directing your questions um, later on, and I'll also be introducing uh, and passing the mics over to each of our speakers this evening as well. So following tonight's event, I just invite you to fill out your feedback forms. Most of our ideas come from folks like yourselves who attend these kinds of evenings. So if you have ideas about things that you'd like to see discussed, uh, people that you'd like to have discussing ideas, if you can uh, leave them on your forms, we'll pick them up at the end of the night. So let's get started. And I'm going to turn it over to Will to start us off. So thank you. Thank you and uh, merci. <laughs> um, um, Pleased to be here. Um, it's not too cold out there, uh, um, but uh, what I want to talk about today, you know, uh, is highlight a couple of things with regards to in information with regards to the immigrant community, and we're talking about policy, future direction. So, not surprisingly, I think the first thing I'll tell you is that, uh, given my background, we need reliable information on this community. Uh, and uh, it has to be detailed, not uh, sort of summary statistics, uh, because one of the things is, think about uh, when you look at a lake or a river, you see the, the, the surface of the water, but a lot of times what's important is below the water line, and you don't see that, and that applies as well to information. Now, the immigrant community, what is, an, what is an immigrant? By definition, an immigrant is foreign born. Uh, and uh, that this immigrant community is not homogeneous. It's made up of a whole bunch of different uh, uh, sub sub communities, and we need to talk about uh, their characteristics because they're not all the, all the same. Uh, very basic point is that immigration leads to economic growth, and it also is uh, has positive benefits for the labor market. Uh, as, as well, you know, social fabric of, of, uh, of communities. 
Uh, and in terms of future directions, uh, I'll be talking very briefly about uh, um, what to expect in the future in terms of immigration in Manitoba, and we expect immigrants uh, and immigration to be a positive factor as we move as we move uh, forward. Okay. So I'll talk a little bit about some uh, selected facts. So first of all, I'll talk about, and again, I should say that if you want a copy of my deck, you know, uh, my, my uh, coordinates are on the last slide, and you just, or just give me your coordinates, I can email you uh, uh, a set of sites. Also, Ben, some of the Ben's material, you know, sort of covers the same thing I'm doing, so I'm going to slip over some of those type of things. Number one, we have had right now, record population growth in the province of Manitoba. Modern day records, the highest since uh, 1971. And immigration is a very important factor in there. This next slide just gives you an indication of the population growth that we've seen over the last number of years, how much of that is relatable to immigration. And here this slide says it's it, the inflow minus the outflow because there is uh, individuals who uh, go to other countries. So you can see in, in most of those years, in the last number of years, you've got immigration running at 100% or so, or a little under 100% of the population growth. It's very important to the growth of the province of uh, Manitoba that has, we have been experienced. Also, population growth uh, leads to economic benefits. Here just gives you an indication of some of the impacts on an average basis that 10,000 more people in the province uh, can bring. You're talking about wage growth, uh, $80 million, uh, retail sales, $200 million, net uh, GDP, uh, $240 million, and then obviously uh, there's a demand for housing in terms of uh, uh, th that particular community. So let's talk a little about the changing diet. Uh, demographics and point is that the recent immigrant community by recent we mean less than 10 years they are considerably younger than Manitoba as a whole and the numbers there show that uh, roughly speaking in 2013 on a median basis that is to say 50% uh, of the population is low uh, is younger than that 50% over the uh, those individuals who came from other countries to Manitoba are about 10 years younger than than uh, the overall Manitoba uh, population. As a result, oh, getting ahead of myself. So this is a age sex pyramid, and it really shows you that there's a, and if I showed you the Manitoba one and beside it, you see a lot more individuals who are younger in, uh, proportionally in the in the, um, uh, the, the recent immigrant community in 2013. And if you thought of this like a, um, a, a person, for example, you would see, do I dare do this? You know, mm -hmm. the arms, there's big arms for this individual. Whereas for the Manitoba total, it would be something like this. So there, it, it's considerably different. And again, that upper, the head part of the individual is a lot smaller for, the, for these individuals who came to us from other countries in, in 2013. And what does it do to us? It makes us younger as a population. Manitoba, surprisingly or not, is the third youngest uh, province in the country. Uh, we in Saskatchewan are pretty close. Alberta is, is a bit uh, ahead, of, ahead of us. And you can see how that difference between us and Canada has, has changed over the last uh, uh, number of years. The, the gap, is getting, gap is getting bigger. Uh, ben has a slide to, uh, on where people come from, but here this is, again, I stole out of his annual report. And if you really want to get a good handle on statistics on the immigrants coming in in a given year, go to the uh, immigration website and pull off their their annual report. It's got a lot of good uh, information there. But again, you see Asia Pacific is the, uh, the leading area we're coming from. Here's something I thought would be interesting. Now, this is, um, then a lot of times I'm wrong, what I think is interesting, not always what other people <laughs> think is interesting. Yeah. So this is a, a map of the 31 political ridings in the, uh, uh, provincially in the city of Winnipeg, so you can look at where you are. So I thought to say, okay, where do immigrants live in the city of Winnipeg? 
recent immigrants under 10 years of residence in, in Canada. One dot is equal to uh, 20 people. So again, you see there, oops, let's go back. The Minto area there in central Minto and Logan, you see a lot of concentration there. Uh, St. Patel and then as well uh, Fort, uh, Fort Richmond, not so much in the other areas. So again, you can, you can do that type of thing. This comes from the National Household Survey. Um, one of the big areas is the labor market. And uh, so this is some information that uh, comes from the StatCan Labor Force Survey. Uh, the province of Manitoba funds uh, an additional 1,100 households to be surveyed every month in the Labor Force Survey to give us better quality information about the, uh, our new residents of the province of Manitoba. Allows us to be able to compare under five years of residence and those individuals five and ten. And also, which is really not a policy issue per se, those individuals who've been in Canada more than ten years. That includes me, and nobody cares about me in terms of, because again, those individuals who have been in the country over 10 years tend to have a lot of different characteristics that are, are not the same as those that have been here of less time. So what you see here is that, uh, how do our, our, our immigrant labor market statistics compare to other uh, jurisdictions of the country? What it basically shows is that Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba are the top three in terms of participation in the labor market and again, much higher than the Canadian average. Employment rate, what is, does employment rate mean? It's the number of people employed per population 15 and over. So here under the five, under five years of residence in 2014, seven out of 10 people were participating in the labor market, uh, were employed compared to only 58% at the, at the national level, and we were then third, third best. If you then look at the um, five to 10 years, you see eight out of 10 people are participating in the labor market, more than the 70 plus in the national level, tied with Alberta for the highest. Uh, so again, the attachment of our immigrants in 2014 on average, it has much more attachment than most other jurisdictions in, in the country. Three out of every four immigrants in 2014 were employed in Manitoba, more so than the 60, two thirds or so in Canada. How does this, their, the participation of immigrants compare to um, uh, overall Manitoba? That's the next slide, I believe, yeah. And so there you see that uh, about two thirds participation in the labor market, about two-thirds of Manitobans uh, do that. Immigrants, 79%, uh, 5 to 10, 81. Immigrants over 10 years, uh, under 60%. And again, on the employment rate, you see that differential. Uh, one may ask yourself, why are immigrants 10 years and over uh, have so low um, um, levels? Basic, one of the basic factors is age structure. Immigrants over 10 years, of, like old fogies like me, uh, as you get older, your participation or your attachment to the labor market gets uh, uh, less so. So there again, that is, uh, that's what's uh, happening there. And you've got this confounding factor of age distribution running through the data. And just to show you some data on wages, um, you see here that uh, uh, the immigrants in 2014, uh, whether they're five or whether they're a five to ten year residents, make on average a little bit less than the overall population. Um, and uh, again, we're not controlling for wage, for uh, full time, part time, or we're controlling for industry of employment or any of that. So what you're seeing is a little lower um, uh, overall average wages. However, those that have been here a bit longer you're seeing that their, their, their increases or their average pay is uh, bigger than those in uh, less than five years. Um, and uh, so in the, where do we see the future going? So here's, this is a slide we just finished and we have released new set of population uh, scenarios for Manitoba. And you see here that uh, on the immigrants, we're looking at about a little under 15,000 going into the future. 
Um, of those provincial nominees, and Ben will talk about that, running around that 75% level. So again, it's the people that are coming to Manitoba, three out of four of them are being selected by, by the, uh, the province. Emigration, is though, that is the group of individuals who leave Manitoba for other countries. And historically, those numbers have been coming down, and uh, we're looking at about 1,500 per year. So what does our population, our guesstimate, maybe look like for our population? We're saying in 2020, which is going to be Manitoba's 150th birthday, we're going to be about 1.4 million people. And if I'm wrong on that, come see me in 2020 if you can track me down. Uh, but again, we're, and uh, so what you're then seeing is historic, you see that historic growth, you know, that's been really coming up. And again, uh, it shows that immigration flow, uh, but also that over the next number of years to 2020, we're looking at growth in, uh, in Manitoba's population, about 16,700 per year on average going to 2020. Immigration is a big cause of that. Natural increase is playing a, a bigger role. Immigrants come from countries who tend to have a bigger fertility rate than the existing population. Uh, so we're having more births in the last year, 2014. Uh, births in Manitoba were a 17 year high. So uh, again, they're, they're contributing to that. And then last and but not least, and maybe most importantly, thank you very much. And hopefully I'm under under the time. And again, those are my uh, coordinates. So if you wanted, uh, uh, you know, um, a copy of the deck, or or you want to talk to me about something at some time in the future, or you want to send me money, money order, uh, there you go. Thank you very much. <laughs>